Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to Episode 16 of Building and Detailing the Monogram Revell 148 Scale B25J. In this episode, we're going to discuss decaling. I'm going to show you my decaling technique. I did a separate video probably two years ago on my decaling technique, but the audio wasn't very good and uh, the area that I was uh, working in had a lot of echo to it. So we'll do this again and I'll demonstrate it to you on building the uh, 148 scale B25J. So what I've done is uh, I've rough cut out the decals and uh, what I'm going to do on each individual decal is cut out as much of the clear area that runs around the edge of the decal which of course causes the silvering. So if you get rid of a lot of this or as much of the clear film as possible around the ink portion of the decal you will eliminate or definitely reduce the probability of uh, getting some silvering. And of course, silvering, just to give you a quick definition, if you apply a decal with some clear backing to a flat base paint, there are tiny ridges on that paint. And that's what gives it the flat appearance because the sun or the light is reflecting and refracting off at all different angles and to your eye it appears to be flat a flat colored paint and when you lay the decal down on there air bubbles get trapped under here and in the clear area it looks like the clear area has silvered and what it is of course is that air is trapped under here so traditionally what scale modelers do is if it's a flat surface they use a clear gloss to cover it uh, and then uh, they apply the decals but there's still the chance that you're going to get some silvering so not only uh, as I showed you I gloss the surface of the uh, of the model and uh, I use Minwax uh, clear uh, uh, gloss polyurethane for that uh, but uh, now I'm going to show you how, demonstrate to you how I cut around all of these decals. On curved areas, what I'll do is I'll do tangential cuts along the edge and eventually get rid of like 99% of the free area. So, of course, it's also important um, not to nick any of the inked areas. So I'm going to set this aside for now. I haven't cut out the devil, devil dog decals yet. I'll do that separately and show you how I do it. Uh, one other point, uh, and I, I discovered this a while back, for the uh, uh, octate filling openings uh, for uh, the gas, if, see that, that circle right there, uh, if you take a water and punch and punch out that, that clear part of that circle, this decal will sit down very well. If you don't do that, even with a gloss surface, you stand a good chance of air bubbles getting trapped under here. So to, uh, to moderate that or to fix that, I punch out a little clear area there so the air has somewhere to go. So uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. So um, for this, for cutting out the decals, uh, I have a plexiglass plate here. I like using black because you can see the decals very easily. I, my trusty stainless steel sewing uh, ruler, which uh, I've had for years. These are hard to find these days. They, have, they seem to like the plastic ones, but this stainless steel one, if you can find them, pick up yourself two or three and they'll last you a lifetime. And a sharp, a new sharp number 11 X-Acto blade. Do not use a dull blade. Always use a sharp, sharp blade when cutting decals out and cutting around decals. The other thing is never tear the backing from the decal, cut it out. And if you use scissors, the problem you're going to have is the scissors create an edge along the decal. And that would be sometimes, even with decal setting solution, very hard to lay that decal down. It kind of deforms it. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and put my glasses back on so I can see better and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. 
So I'm going to demonstrate a few of these to you, and then um, and my 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 hair might get in the way a little bit. So it's important to line it up. and cut it out. I'm going to speed the video up just a little bit, but uh, you're clearly going to be able to see how I'm doing this. Right now, I'm cutting out just the edge where the straight part uh, attaches to the circle area of the insignia. And then I'll go ahead and uh, begin cutting the straight parts out. And then once that's done, then I'll start working on the tangential cuts. On this next cut, where I originally sliced into where the straight part uh, attaches to the curved surface of the uh, insignia, I didn't quite get exactly where it needed to be. So uh, I had to do a little more cutting. What you don't want to do and what you should never do is when you have two cuts that meet, but the, the decal doesn't drop off by itself. Don't pull the decal or attempt to tear it because what's going to happen is it's going to damage the edge of that decal. And when you go to put that decal, on the uh, surface of the model, you're going to see that damage. So uh, here I am beginning the tangential cuts. I do a little at a time and I go slow. It's a really, really important to use a sharp blade here and just cut slightly along the edges and work your way around a curved surface. Notice how I'm firmly holding the metal ruler and pressing very hard against the surface of the decal. What you don't want to happen is have that decal shift on you under the surface of the ruler while you're cutting because you're going to damage the decal. So always remember to position properly and then press hard down on the ruler so that the decal won't move. One or two more cuts and uh, we'll be done. And this decal is ready to go. So I'm gonna put that off here. Let's go ahead and do the tri triangle signatures or insignia that go on the tail. This is easy. And the, these will look like they're painted on too when they're done. Here again, we're going to speed the video up just a little bit, but I think you get the general idea on the simple decals where it's just a box shape or a triangle shape. It's real easy to cut out the edges. But again, go slow, press down hard, and use a sharp blade. The one drawback to using a plexiglass surface is over time, the blades will start to trench the plastic surface. So you may want to use a glass plate, but be sure to put some duct tape around the edges of the glass plate so you don't cut yourself.
All right. Here we have it. Two more. On a decal like this, you really, you're not going to be able to cut all this out. So what you do is you're going to cut around the perimeter here as much as possible. And, uh, and that'll reduce the amount or the probability of any um, silvering. Once again, I'm going to speed the video up to save a little bit of time. So here I'm slowly working my way around this decal and removing as much of the clear film as possible. And uh, some of this is going to be by freehand and some of it I'll use my trusty ruler. What I'm doing here is notching out small areas in order to reduce the amount of the uh, clear film around some of the inked decal. My apologies for my hair and my head sometimes getting in the way. So, we've got the majority of the clear film removed. And uh, that'll go on quite nicely, I believe. So we're going to go here and take a break. And uh, I'm going to change out the blade. And I always save my quasi dull blades for photo etch work. Because they'll cut those runners quite nicely until the end of the blade snaps off. So I have a separate container. Uh, that's labeled old blades and uh, I got to get some more from my stock and we'll go ahead and change out the blade uh, next I will show you how I cut out a set of numbers Once more, I'm going to speed the video up to save some time. When you're cutting out these numbers, you need to be very, very careful on cutting out the edges. And when you're notching out the interior part of some numbers, like say a 3 or an A or an M, you don't necessarily have to cut all of the clear film out, but the majority of it um, should be cut out in order to reduce the probability of getting any silvering. Here, I'm carefully notching out the angled uh, backside areas of the number three. Removing the clear film from numbers and letters on 148 scale and 132nd scale 
uh, decals can be rather tedious and uh, it's a slow process, but the results are well worth the efforts. On 170 second scale decals, I would recommend just cutting around the outside edges and the perimeters of the decals. Here I'm starting to remove the clear film from the inside area of the number three. You got to go slow and be very careful that you don't impact the or cut into the ink area of these small decals. Notice how I've been manipulating both the decal and the edge of the blade in order to get in there into these small areas and remove as much of that clear film as possible. When cutting in these small areas, it's very important to have good lighting. And uh, if you have to take your glasses off like I do, please do so that uh, you can see what you're doing. Removing the clear film from this one number three took about 15 minutes. So be mindful of that as you begin this process. Be patient, go slow, and if you get frustrated, set it aside. There's actually four number threes one goes on each cowling and then one goes on each side of the rudder. And once these are applied, they're going to look like they're painted on the surface. This decal is one piece. And what I'm going to do is cut it in two and the bulldog and the wording underneath devil dog will be cut out separately and then applied separately to the surface. And one last time, I'll be uh, speeding up the video here a little bit uh, to save a little bit of time. What I'm doing here is I'm notching out the edges of the wording so that uh, I can, um, by freehand, remove the bottom half of this decal where the wording says devil dog. And then uh, we'll work on the upper half. Here again, notice how I'm manipulating both the decal and the edge of the blade and holding the decal securely to the plexiglass surface. The wording's been cut out and it's ready to be installed onto the forward part of the fuselage. And now I'm working on the uh, Bulldog emblem. What I'm doing here is I'm notching out small areas so that I can trim around those notches. And I'm gonna slowly work my way around 
the outer edge and perimeter of this decal so that when I'm done, almost all of the clear film will be removed from it. Because of the odd shape of the perimeter of this decal, this is going to have to be done entirely by freehand. Notice how I'm changing the way I'm holding the handle on the number 11 X-Acto blade so that I get more positive control on where the tip of that blade is going to go. I usually sweep all of the scrap decal to the right and then uh, the parts that have been cut out, I either put above the, the cutting surface or on the top half of the cutting surface. What you don't want to happen, this is especially happens on small decals to me occasionally, the decal itself gets mixed up with the scrap and then I got to sit there and go through all the scrap until I find my decal. So it's really important to decide where you're going to put the scrap and where you're going to put the uh, finished decals and don't put them too close to each other. With all of the decals cut out and applied to the surface of the model, now I'm going to show you what the finished product looks like. I showed you how I cut the decals and uh, I used a standard technique for applying them. Gloss the surface with uh, Minwax Clear Gloss Polyurethane, which is what I like to use because <clears throat> one, one or two coats usually does the job. And then uh, I used Microsol micro sole and micro set to apply the decals and uh, they came out pretty good. I tried using the red dots I don't think I'll use them again. I like the other type better that has the open circles. Here's the propellers. You see how glossy they are. Here's the cowlings. <clears throat> and as you're moving the decal around, you get some of the glue on the surface. And it's pretty transparent. You're not going to see it. But if you don't clean around that decal with some water and then uh, dry it off with the other half side of the Q-tip, what's going to happen is when you airbrush it, with a clear flat, you're gonna see that glue. So be sure to clean around the decals and get the glue off. The next step will be to, uh, as I mentioned, clear, clean the, the glue off of the surrounding decals. And then uh, I'll give this aircraft a coat of clear flat. I like to use Tester's Dull Coat, that works really, really well. And then uh, that'll lighten up this semi-gloss blue deep blue color and what a difference in the colors once the surface has been given a clear flat coat of paint so with that i hope you enjoyed this video and uh my decaling techniques and in our last episode episode 17 we're going to do final assembly and then i'm going to show you some pictures of the finished model thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up and when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com, 
where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!